Hello everyone. Today I'm going to play some Ramp Kara. I think this was my probably my favorite deck that I built. Um, like sort of from scratch myself in my time playing original Duelist of all of them. I think this was the deck I was probably the proudest of. I can remember off the top of my head. Um, and it's super fun to play. So hopefully we'll have a good time with it. Core of this deck. This is a Ramp deck. Um, we are playing all of the Ramp cards that exist. Um, I wonder if I can... No, that only searches names. Um, we are playing three Crystal Wisp, which gives us some mana. Three Mana Death Grip, which gives us some mana. And three Malicious Wisp, which gives us some mana if it doesn't die. Um, and then we are playing some big idiots at the top of the uh, top of the curve. We've got Jack's True Sight. Um, who summons a bunch of ranged units, which you can buff with Kara. And Dora, uh, which is a Amazing card that dies to Plasma Storm uh, horrifically, unless you buff it with Kara. And Grandmaster Embler, which makes a bunch of walls with which you can easily uh, one-shot your opponent, uh, assuming that you've buffed them all with Kara. Um, so basically this is a ramp deck with a little bit of... I wouldn't call it a combo deck per se, but it has some finishes that are kind of set up to benefit heavily from Kara's Bloodborne spell. Um, and the rest of the deck is it is very minion-heavy. There's a lot of utility minions. There are cards that, um, you know, aren't like the most efficient stat-wise, but get a lot better when you play them with Kara's Bloodborne spell and a bunch of extra mana. Like, for instance, playing Thunderhorn. Thunderhorn's a 4-4 nowadays. Um, if anyone remembers the uh, Thunderhorn glory days when it was a 4-5 and it was absolutely everywhere. It, those were kind of necessary because it was a good counterplay to Magmod X, but um, it was a lot and eventually got nerfed. Uh, and of course, uh, we're, we're playing it with the classic aspect of Shimzar combo, turning a creature into a battle pet, which forces it to attack the nearest enemy. Um, which, if that's a Thunderhorn, you can get some nice AoE going on. Um, both of these cards got nerfed because that combo was so ubiquitous. But we can kind of unnerf them by having more mana. So the fact that aspect of Shimzar costs three instead of two isn't a big deal. And making Thunderhorn bigger. Um... Which kind of offsets the fact that its size got nerfed. So basically, we're going to use the ramp and Kara's Bloodborne spell to be to push a number of creatures that are like a little bit expensive or a little bit vulnerable over the threshold to being quite easy to cast and not that vulnerable. And then we're going to kill our opponent with them. Um, and besides the cards I mentioned, the rest of the deck is yelling card draw. And then a couple of ways to get Mimi with Malicious Wisp. Um, namely, we have a Light Bender for a Dispel, which can be useful in general, but also Dispels Malicious Wisp. And one aspect of Ego for the Spice, uh, which you know can be used as a Dispel on an enemy minion as well if we need, but uh, primarily is there for Malicious Wisp. So sometimes, every now and then, we'll get to meme somebody. Um, one thing to note about this particular list uh, is there is a Dancing Blades in it, um, I have never played Dancing Blades in this deck before. What I used to play in this slot was Cloudcaller, which isn't on Duelist.gg yet, it seems. Um, Cloudcaller is a 5 mana 4 5 that turns your Bloodborne spell into deal 4 damage for one shot and then turns it back afterwards. Um, so basically 6 mana 4 5 deal 4 damage. It's like a Vanar Lava Slasher, basically. Very, very, very good card. Um, especially if you're playing it ahead of schedule. Thanks to ramping once or twice. Um, but as yet, it doesn't exist. So I've replaced my two cloud callers with a dancing blades and a third Pandora, because Pandora is sweet. So let's go. I've named my deck in honor of cloud callers, as you can see. I'm looking forward to this. I used to really enjoy playing this deck. Um I'm not sure, I, I don't think it was ever like a competitive tier deck. In fact, I'm confident that it wasn't, but it is sweet. Now, this hand looks really good as well. This will probably get Phoenix fired, but I'm going to keep it anyway. Um, I will replace this Pandora. And the question is, do I want to keep one of the Crystal Wisps? Both of the Crystal Wisps. I'm obviously keeping one because I can play it straight away. Stojourner is quite useful if I've thrown away a bunch of cards ramping. So I'm tempted to keep that as well. I think so. If, 
if I play this and it dies for some reason, right, I'll have four mana on turn two either way, so I can play them both. I think I, yeah, I should keep both. <gasps> we get to meme. We're gonna do it. All right, that's sick. No complaints. This hand is awesome. All right, so we're gonna play this, and then next turn we're gonna malicious wisp aspect if you go the wisp, probably, and then my opponent's in the stone age. Um, and if for some reason that feels unsuitable, we can also Wisp plus Sojourner, which is quite nice as well. But I think at this point I can probably replace this Wisp. Because um, if we're ramping twice is like enough, generally. Uh, and by the time Battle Pando. All right. Don't care too much about that. Oh, they're killing my uh, Crystal Wisp. Okay. I, again, I really don't care. Oh, they attacked me. That's actually quite handy. Um, They should have attacked my Wisp there, because now I can punch this Battle Panda to death. Oh, it's my turn, apparently. Oh, no, it's not. Ignore me. Right. So, we're going to have lots of mana. We're going to have a nice little time. I'm going to move over here, play Malicious Wisp, punch this. Ego the Malicious Wisp. Must have been a 5 mana. Yeah, I should replace this. That's that's more than enough mana to be going on with, I think. And then next time we can develop Sojourner or Thunderhorn, or maybe both if I get a mana tile. So punch this. Wisp up here. -la 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 -la. What do we get? Oh, that's, that's even a good card. <laughs> oh, we got the combo as well. Oh, this hand is sick. I could not have asked for a better demonstration of this deck so far. I mean, we've ramped twice. We've stolen our opponent's monotile. Transform a neighbor. Okay, cool. Whatever. Um, now I get to play two creatures. And next turn, Pandora. Kind of... Is there a way I can save this monotile? Like, if I just block my opponent off from accessing it and sandbag, the next one I can get to 8 mana for Pandora plus BBS, which, like, I guess they can turn it into a 0 2, so it's not that good. I'm not, I shouldn't overcommit to that. Maybe it's better to have a Thunderhorn and a Sojo. Yeah, you know what, actually. I'm going to do neither of those things. I'm going to play Sojourner and buff it and pass. I'm going to hold on to these because this is useful because Songhai usually play a lot of must-remove cards. Put this here so they can't backstab me very easily. Um, That's a good draw. I don't need, like, they don't have Plasma Storm or other punishes for three attack minions, so buffing Pandora isn't, like, necessary. I can just play it normally. And overcommitting to Pandora is going to be bad. Battle pets are an interesting choice. Oh, okay, fair enough. Maybe they thought it did something else. On to game two. Damn, that's a shit. That hand was so good. <laughs> like, that's if the deck did that every time, every time, every time, it would be like a top tier. <laughs> Top tier unbeatable list. I um you may have a question which I would like to forestall, which is okay, if that was so good, why aren't you playing three aspect of ego? Um the reason for that is aspect of ego doesn't do anything particularly good without the malicious wisp synergy. And even then, you are paying two cards for the privilege, so you really need to make sure that you're gonna draw some cards afterwards to make up for it. Or you're going to, you know, you've got a handful of haymakers and you're going to spend several turns just playing a spell every turn. Is that the same person I just played? It might be. Game two. Um, oh, this hand is much worse. <laughs> yeah, turn two Spelljammer isn't like completely terrible or anything. Aspect Thunderhorn is okay, but... I think I'll do this. Um, second aspect isn't particularly good. Lightbend is not bad. Right, if I go up here, 
Oh god, now I have to try and remember how battle pads work. <laughs> um, I don't think this will come forward. I think it'll go up diagonally rather than taking the central tile. I think. I hope. Pretty, uh, pretty lag. Oh, they got it as well. Never mind then. I, back in the day, I titled so many videos things along the lines of like, how do battle pets work again? Or Adam fails at doing battle pets or whatever. Um, and I'm glad to see that I'm still getting caught out by battle pet behavior <laughs> years on. <laughs> One thing that I, I often see people complain that online card games don't have a rule book. Um, and I like fully echo that complaint. Give us rule books. Oh, wow. Okay. I guess my... Put an exact copy of a friend. All right. All right. Wait, they're just going to overdraw, right? I guess not, because I can kill this. But I don't have to, because... Oh, no. They're... I, I miscounted. There it goes. Okay, I guess I will kill it then. Um, I can dispel this. Wait, put a random song I spell into your action, but I cost one less. So I can kill this and then they'll mill the tusk boar. Does any of that matter? I don't think so. I could just let them have the spell. Like how... How bad is it going to be? It could be quite bad. You never know. But... Um, I really don't have anything to do here. I'll just punch this and uh, slap down the jammer. I guess I'll move this over here to play around like backstab Miss Dragon Seal type of lines, but maybe I should have let this hit me again actually rather than killing it. Because they can remove the spell jammer now um, quite easily, although I don't know if that matters too much. Stack is definitely trickier to play when uh, you don't have like two more mana than your opponent. Um, I will say. We play nine sources of ramp to make sure we draw them, but it doesn't always happen. Is it? Oh, maybe I should have let them have the Tusk War and just killed the. Yeah, I think what I should have done is. Moved down, attacked the battle pet. Played Spelljammer, like, next to me. Like, here, maybe. Oh, that's scary. So if they have Mist Dragon... I'm gonna focus, okay. Oh, it's alive. Ah, uh, right. Well, I can just trade into this, which is quite convenient. I can play a Malicious Wisp and buff it. I can dispel this. I don't need to draw two extra cards this turn, that's for sure. Buff the Malicious Wisp seems good, because it'll be quite difficult for them to remove. Um, so I'm going to just do that. Do I take two to keep my Azza Herald alive? I actually don't think so. I don't need it. It's a one-two. It's not going to do anything. Um, the other question is, do I get closer to my opponent? What if I get like a bit closer, but just stand against the back wall? Maybe I should leave the Malicious Wisp as far away from them as possible. I mean, I kind of wouldn't mind being able to attack them with it at some point, but... No, I think... Let's just put this miles away. Buff it up. And uh, move in. Death Grip's pretty good. Like, I have removal in hand, so I'm not too worried about needing it to trade. Um, like, I have a Paragon and a Lightbender and a uh, an Aspect, so I'm really not lacking in any sort of interaction for their stuff. Um, plus, I've ramped, and they're down on mono now, so they, their options are more limited, and I have this Pandora for next turn. Um, Bite Widow. Getting spicy, are we? Well, that's awkward. 
I do need to deal with that in some way. Or I could just be bold and slam the Pandora. But I think turning it into a pet is probably better. Alright, let's replace this. If we get Thunderhorn, and blow, okay. Um, this is on cooldown. Oh, I really want to just jam Pandora. Like, it can absorb the hits from White Widow pretty well. How much... They're going to have an Ether Master. Yeah, it's like pretty decent odds. I think I'll just be mono efficient here. Flying. Like, yes, if they replace and they kill this, that's unlucky. I hope that doesn't happen. But at the same time, it's not a particularly high chance. If they have Ether Eastern Master or whatever that 5 6 is that replaces their hand, then good for them, I guess. Is that a card? Am I remembering that right? I swear there was like a 5 mana 5 6 that opening Gambit replaced your entire hand. This is good. Them moving away from the Serenity is actually good. Yeah. Again, OBS is completely unsurprising. But this is fine though, because oh, I've run another Malicious Wisp. That's kind of cute. Um, I guess I can punch this, leaving the White Widow alive. Yeah. Another task four. And this kind of feels like a reasonable place to play a Sunset Paragon, doesn't it? Is it too spicy to just play another Malicious Wisp? Almost certainly, yes. Yeah, I don't need this. That's pretty good, though, because I can kill this for... Oh, well, actually, what I should do is... Paragon and then ping the White Widow. Just save that mana. Um, do I buff this? I think I'd rather have the Embler. But at the same time, they're not super likely to be... Like, they're still against the wall next turn, which seems quite likely. The Embler is quite bad, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna buff it. And I think this Wisp is gonna start making its way back in. Oh, another Pandora. Damn. <laughs> no, it's fine. Because they'll just... Pandora again. Like... I think this is the same person I just played against. And if they're playing OBS and Bamboozle, uh, then it's going to get pandered, you know? Pandora. Right, they have a million cards. And now they have a some amount of mana. My hand is medium. They have moved, though, uh, which makes this Embler look a bit more interesting. Embler is only Embler is much worse without the BBS though. So I think my play is like just Pandora plus maybe this to take up space. Or a healer if I can find a healing unit. Okay. Yeah. Got any other effects there? Maybe not. Miss Dragon Seal. Is there anything oh never mind, okay. Uh Right, I don't think we're going to need this. I think we just want hard removal and bombs. So this is on cooldown. Obviously making that trade. We'll just uh, send in the Pandoras. Um, I'm just going to play this Wisp to block space. It doesn't, like, do anything, but having a take-up room is helpful, I think. Where do I want my opponent? Should I play it here? Maybe I just don't play it. Have something to replace next turn. But I'm not lacking in cards, and there's a good chance they just die after I play this. 
Um, all right, I will play it. Frenzy, nice. So they've shown. This is the last game they played a flame wreath, another flame wreath, right? So they've shown one. No, it wasn't this game. So they've shown two flame wreaths. There's one left. They do have Bloodborne Spell, so they could play one here, link it up here, deal three. But they need to spend, like, dealing two damage a bunch of times so Pandora does nothing. Uh, I'm on too much life to just die to it, so. Man, Malicious Wisp is such a good card. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Called it. It's okay, that doesn't work against Ambler. Um... So assuming they... Ah, oh, they moved. I'll probably still do it anyway. Like, it's enough damage to look worth it. Uh, I guess I need to kill that, don't I? If nothing else, because it's in the way. Um, I can make a 2-6 and draw a card, which is pretty good. Do I need a second one of these? What else am I going to hit this turn that will be better than the Aspect of Shimzar? Probably nothing. You could just do this anyway, but I th again, I think the Battle Pando makes it quite bad. So I think I'll keep playing patiently. Oh, that's good. It doesn't even die. And it only does one damage to the Sojo, so I can probably hit it again next turn. We're going to do this. We're going to bring this in. I think since my opponent has taken the stance of walling themselves in, I'm just going to take as much space as possible. Did I get the throw around? No, okay, we're fine. Um, I will hold on to both of these. Nice card draw. All right, it just resolved it quickly. That was weird. <laughs> I got I got the card in my hand before the animation played. And I guess I've been like way too used to two draw. Death strike seal on that is a bit of a desperation play from them. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. Oh, I see. So their deck is all about buffing units up and then getting copies of them. So death strike seal plus second self to get like. And they have two Death Touch Slows. Oh, that's cool. Clever Strat. Right. Um, I need either of these. Oh, yeah, I, I guess at this point, this Ambler looks quite a bit worse. That said, this is going to die, right? This is going to like just trade with this 1-2. I can get the 1-4 out of the way. But I would have to... I'm still blocking a space at that point. So I can't really effectively Ambler this turn. I may as well play the Spelljammer. It's just a good body. Good aspect of Shims out this, actually. That seems kind of cool. Yeah, you know what? Let's just keep the card draw coming. Um, Trade this off. It's going to surround my opponent, basically. Um, oh, maybe I want this to move this up here. Buff the team. We're just gonna we're just gonna keep it chill, basically. Oh, this is cool. Now I can thunderhorn this next turn, and um, have a good old time. They are still on 21, but they're down to three cards in hand. More Death Strike Seal, second self. If I if, if I could give my opponent any advice. Like opponent, if you if you happen to watch this, I really love what you're doing. I really, really, really recommend not playing battle pets for this. Um because, yes, it's cool, but also, um, 
it's very punishable. Um, let me think. So I think at this point I start hitting them. Um, I can even, I can cash in the malicious wisp even. I really want to get this thunderhorn down right. So what I probably want to do is like I move up here. We're gonna send this wisp in. Um, and move this down here. This here. Thunderhorn here. Um, <laughs> fine. <laughs> sure. Um, just more bodies. Attack. Um, yeah, just keep getting damaging. So then this will attack the Thunderhorn. Or one of them will attack the Thunderhorn and the Thunderhorn will kill everything. Yeah, I'm still on five cards in hand. Fair play Zoe is a pretty reasonable card for that. But random Songhai spells tend to be pretty hit or miss, I think. Thunderbomb. Oh, that's a card I forgot existed. Holy moly. That was a good one. Will there ever be an end to the Tusk Balls? They are still dead to this Wisp. They're body blocked. Death Strike Seal. Okay, so I can transform this. I have two shots of transforming it into something that dies to Dancing Blades. And then uh, I can kill them with the Wisp. Or well, Dancing Blades plus a general attack. Oh, nope. They... Um, opponent, I think you might have rushed that a little bit. Yeah, I, I do like what they were doing with the second seal. I think that's clever. Like, trying to set up buffed minions that may not be able to get immediate value. Because, like, Death Strike Seal, you know, it costs two and you have to have something to play. But you can, like, slap down a unit, slap a seal on it, bounce it back to your hand. And I guess the idea of the battle pets is that they're, like, people ignore them or... You know, Zoe is not a card you want to actually remove from play. Um, right, let's see uh, what we play against next. Last time, I, when I did that uh, Wanderer video, I did feel a little bit bad because, like, a lot of people were clearly just, like, you know, experimenting and doing fun, cool things. And there's me playing the, like, best deck in the format, uh, cruising up the ladder. Um, but like, I didn't feel that bad because, you know, I enjoy Wanderer <laughs> too much. It's just super fun to play that style of deck for me. I really, I really enjoy playing like, limited. Um, is that, is that the same person? They have a similar username. <laughs> I'm not sure it is the same person. But if it is, I guess maybe they've switched decks. Uh, right, I'll keep this because it's ramp. Hopefully they give me some type of X1 to play. I'll just mulligan the expensive cards here. This looks fine. If we can find a Malicious Wisp to go with the uh, aspect, that'd be sweet. Okay, double mana death grip is a heavy commitment. Oh, this sucks. No uh, no two drop. Sedge. Sojourner. Where's the crying emoji? There we go. All right, give me like a Blood Tear Alchemist or something that I can kill to make up for this. Oh, that's bad. Um, no, I guess it's not that bad. I can, well, I can transform it if I want. Um, it's quite an effective dispel. Uh, right, let's replace the Sojo. Don't need her. Wisp aspect is good. So I have two options, basically. I can hit this and ramp off of it. Um, or I can transform it into something. I think hitting it and giving them the Phoenix Fire is probably better. Um, because I need mana. Um, they only get the one Phoenix Fire because everyone gets milled. Um, so, yes, they got their card. 
but I know you shop. Uh, but at least I've ramped, um, and I'll be able to do Malicious Wisp Aspect regardless next turn. Um, if I want, or I can play a Sunset Paragon. We can do Malicious Wisp Aspect, buff it, which is kind of cool. Let's see what else they have. Don't care about that. Assuming they have some other card to play here. Ow. Yep. <clears throat> That is a bit grim. Um, we need to replace for healing, and we need to replace for healing stat. I think I'll do a wisp aspect and leave the monotile open. Um, let's get rid of this because I don't need more ramp now. Just need to interact. That's bad. Maybe they have enough cards in hand that killing this actually doesn't matter that much. Because like there's a good chance they have another one and or more Phoenix Fires, other stuff to do. And like having Tuscor in hand makes like other lantern foxes worse and stuff. Um plus I have like AoE in hand. Um and things, so maybe I can just ignore it. It does guarantee that they can trade with whatever my malicious wisp turns into. I guess what I could do is like do this and then see if it turns into something I actually care about. No. Um, right, I'm pretty happy with them trading a Tusk Ball for that. So I think I'll save myself the two life. Oh, <laughs> that I would have played. No, I, I guess, no, this is handy to have against the first Heart Seeker, actually. I need healing, and I need healing very bad. A lack of a... I've, I've kind of recovered okay in terms of mana, at least, because I've managed to play ramp into ramp, but... Missing the turn one play hurts. Ooh, that's bad. I should have thought about that, actually. Oh, again, it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, look, they just played a Thunder Bombs. Like, whatever. Um, I, I could kill this, or I could just ignore it. Um, like, the spell jammer looks okay now. Top decking Pandora would be really good here. Or just, like, any healing. Um... Oh, yes. All right, cool. Let's do that. Um, I think I can protect myself as well. Ooh, not that. I think I can protect myself a little bit. Like, I don't really want my opponent to hit me. Um, so I'm gonna, I can occupy space with big minions. So I can do this. And then I can back off a little bit. So if they want to hit me in the face, they have to go through 4-6. Um, and then I'm drawn up. I've got the combo. That's excellent. So I have a big AoE clear for next turn. I have another AoE as well if they play a big minion. Well, I guess this kills anything. A Wisp and Mana Death Grip, which is good, because if they kill all of this and play a Heart Seeker, the fact that I'm standing far away doesn't matter that much, because I can just ping it. Um, back to 17 feels a little more confident as well. Like high on life, High on life total and further away from my opponent is good. Um, and yeah, we're just hoping, I guess the plan is to try and ride this spell, um, spell jammer to victory. If I can just run out cards while I dig for finishes. Oh, that's kind of fine. I don't hate that. I can just take some space, which is actually quite useful here. And I got a two for one. <clears throat> I will just ping that. Actually, I don't need to. I can just hit it. I'm standing next to it. Um... And play a Thunderhorn or Thunderhorn plus Malicious Wisp. Ooh, big jacks. That's really good, actually. Um, especially as I can bring this down and it'll body block the one in the corner. Yeah, that looks amazing. All right, so we'll do this. Pop the team. Clear this. Do I care about pinning my opponent down here? Or do I want to prevent I can't prevent them from hitting me anyway if they want. So I think pinning them in is better. I will leave this. I will not attack here. I want to leave this up so I can protect as many jacks. Because otherwise they can like Phoenix Fire it or Tusk Bore it and move over. I guess they can Tusk Bore any single one of these. Um but that's only one. That's not too bad. 
And they're spending, like, I can then kill it with something. Oh, I should, I should have thought of that and saved the mana death grip, actually, instead of replacing it. Crescent Spear. Crescent Spear Ghost Lightning. That's fairly awful, actually. Oh, that's nasty. I mean, it's technically a two-for-one, but it's very mana efficient for them. Although I guess I'm two mana up, so it doesn't matter that much. Two mana up, despite having gone first. Um... Right, at this point, I want to get rid of the Crescent Spear, so I think I might actually commit um, Aspect plus Thunderhorn to this. And hit them. Ooh, I don't like it. don't like hitting them. <laughs> but I do need to get rid of this. They can, heart, they can Arcane Heart, which is fine, because it'll die to the AoE. <clears throat> This is spooky, very spooky. Didn't BBS, four cards in hand. All right, certainly don't need this crystal spinning. What have we got? Another Thunderhorn. Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of the best I can do. Let's see what this turns into first. Is there anything particularly special? They get a random battle pet. That is actively good for me because I have another Thunderhorn. Um, dare I stand next to them and take three? I think the answer is no, even though it involves leaving them up with a Crescent Spear. Like, three damage to my face from them from hitting the Crescent Spear and then a potential two of them, them hitting me the normal way, is uh, quite a bit more than... Um, What would otherwise, uh, you know, than the than the buff they'd get, <clears throat> and obviously they can attack this and it dies, but that's fine because then they lose the spear spear anyway, which is what I wanted. My hand continues to be bad. I wish they hadn't killed that spell jammer. Um, I missed my sojourner from uh, from the first turn. Okay, though they committed to the phoenix fire. That's not too bad. But I am running low on resources. I can cut. Ooh, hello. It has force field. How does that work with Thunderhorn? Genuinely don't remember. I guess I can attack it. Does that work with Thunderhorn? As a herald. Yes. I think it prevents it, right? And the force field comes back in their turn. So I think the Thunderhorn won't trigger, which is really annoying. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to find out what are my other options. I mean, I can kill this but with like a Sunset Paragon, but who cares? Um, no, I think this is the line anyway. And we just hope that it works. Like, it's still okay, because it'll be on 4 HP. Yeah, it doesn't work. Damn. Eternity Painter, okay. I say okay, that's not good, but it's... Not that bad, either. I think I have lost. I've just kind of... Not really done anything. Um, end of their turn, so I can't buff these either, which is annoying. Right, we obviously need this. This doesn't really do anything here, but death grip. Okay, what can I actually reasonably do? I can clear this. Can I? I have to attack this in order to move one of these out the way to play a Sunset Paragon and then ping it. I can heal as well though, but it means I can't buff the team. So it feels pretty sketch. I can still top deck out of this though, right?
finally kill the Tusk Ball. Lay down a Paragon. Kill this. Dare I assume that they don't have seven damage? I think the answer to that is no. It's having force field is so annoying. <laughs> so is any other battle pet. That's not all. We'll just blow up all that stuff. And we'd probably be in this game. Oh no. Can you finish fight the Paragon? Okay. Guess I'm not dead then. Mm hmm. This is the same person. They're playing all the same cards. I think they just missed lethal though. Yes. Opponent, you should have put those Phoenix Fires on my face and then you would have uh, won the game. As it is, can I draw a Thunderhorn? Delicious Wisp. Excellent. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm assuming that means I'm dead. Um, but let's see. <laughs> okay, there's a Thunderhorn. And they're on 14, so I'm not confident. They need four damage, but they've probably used all their Phoenix Fires. Um, I guess they can do some Death Strike sealing. Maybe five damage. So I can play the Thunderhorn to blow up. How does the chain work? It should work, right? Thunderbomb on my face. Prismatic Illusionist. Okay. And this Thunderhorn is going to be huge. But I'm probably still, yes, I'm still going to die. No, wait, I can, can I hide? I can't, can I? I mean, I want to do this just to watch the fireworks. It's going to be so good. Um, but I don't think I can get out of this. I can't body block enough. I can punch this, but it doesn't actually achieve anything. Because of that. But, oh well, I just want to watch this. It'll be awesome. <laughs> it's so good. Oh wait, they can't attack me. Right, of course, it's, it's twice the hits. <laughs> Can they find a Phoenix Fire or a Flame Wreath? Well, the flame wreath, they need flame wreath and a focus. <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, they've, they've all expired my fun. One life. They can't, they can't attack me. I've got a lantern fox, all right. Can I draw anything here? I mean, I can draw as a herald, I guess, but that doesn't really help, does it? All right, I die. <laughs> that was sweet. <laughs> oh, what a silly game. Well, what, what did we learn from that? Don't miss your turn one plays. Uh, <laughs> cost me kind of a lot, but... You know what, if I hadn't, we maybe wouldn't have gotten to watch the uh, Thunderhorn fireworks at the end there. That was sick. Right, I think that's uh, that's all I have time for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week with some more Duelist.gg. Bye, everyone.